Hi. A lot of you have asked me about how to stay on plan in social situations or what do I do to kind of win over my family. A lot of women have asked especially about their husbands who can be stubborn and giving up bread. Well, one of the things that I've done is I've made foods that are really satisfying, really rich and healthy. And folks will ask all the time, you mean you can eat this on your diet? And of course I can. This is my diet. So. We have a family get together and I'm going to make a dish to share and we're not having a meal. It's really, a, it's an afternoon birthday party. And so we're having kind of heavier d'oeuvres, if you will. And this is something that I thought you would enjoy. I, it's a chorizo, uh, we'll call it a chorizo taco bake. <laughs> How's that? And actually I've taken it before to a Halloween party. It worked really, really well. So let me get, while I'm talking, let me explain this to you and then we'll talk in between. But this is one of those meals that's great to share and it can be like an appetizer or it can be a full meal. So what I've done is I've browned about a pound and a quarter, pound and a half of ground beef. It's 90-10 lean. It was on sale, $2.79 a pound. So you know I love a sale. Um, and then there's about a pound of Mexican chorizo. I like the Supremo brand because it's zero carb. So I brown that up. I'm going to add an onion, and this is just one whole onion that's been chopped. I actually used a mandolin that I um, just got and loved. And so I'm gonna throw the onion in there, and it's in fairly big pieces like you would expect. I could chop this more fine. I'm actually trying to chop a few pieces because uh, the way it's chopped now is more like you would do for fajitas. But I'm going to put the onion in there with the meat and get that nice and browned. Now, what I'm gonna do is brown all of this and then we'll add cheeses and that kind of thing and we'll put it in the oven. So we don't have to overcook the onion, but certainly we want it cooked fairly well. And I've got this on a high heat to help expedite the process. So I haven't put any seasonings yet. We'll do that in just a bit. Basically, it's a pound and a quarter or so of, of uh, ground beef and it's a full pound of chorizo. And again, it's the Supremo brand. Be careful, chorizo if you haven't used it. Chorizo is just a Mexican sausage. We love it here. And the Supremo brand doesn't have added sugars. Be careful because some brands do have added sugars. But the Supremo brand is one we really like. The package says it's zero carb per serving. I suspect, I don't know this, but I suspect it's a fraction of a carb. And so we do count um, carbs, but the servings are quite big. And I do have a video uh, where I do trees of eggs for my husband where I show you the actual brand. So I've added that in and I'm going to add some bell pepper. Now, this bell pepper is chopped a little more finely because I was playing with the mandolin. I'm going to add red and green. I normally would not use red um, because it is higher in carb. Did you know that often colored vegetables are higher carb like purple cabbage and purple onion has more carbs than the white version? So anyway, I normally wouldn't use the red, but because I'm serving this to company, I wanted the color, I want it to be pretty, and so I am using red bell pepper. And I may not use all of this. Okay. And I wanted, and that was, what I had done was I used a whole red bell pepper and a whole green bell pepper. So that was probably close to a little more than half, maybe two thirds of each. Use your own judgment with it as far as um, putting the whole thing in. I could have, but it does add carbs and I do have to be careful about not going over my carb limit. If I was doing this for my family, I probably would have used um, maybe a half of one green bell pepper if it was just going on the table for us. So I'm gonna give that a stir. And as I was saying before, when, Folks I often ask about social situations and it can be really difficult to navigate. Um, you know, you go to a birthday party or you go to uh, a Super Bowl party and there's gonna be food there. And a lot of what we do socially is about food. So if you can make hearty things like this to share that are kind of universally loved, then that's something that will, one, maybe convert others to eat low carb, high fat, convince them that you're not um, deprived, keeps it sustainable, lets you enjoy yourself and not feel hungry. And that's at the heart of a lot of this is not being deprived. It's a horrible feeling to go into a social so situation and not be able to eat anything on the table. And so if you have this, um, something that one, you can eat, is something that others can enjoy. And it's, so it's a win-win. 
just browning this down and let's add some seasonings. Now what I have in there so far is just the hamburger and the chorizo. Chorizo is a Mexican sausage, so it already has some really nice spices. This one tends to be a little hot and I'm making it for a crowd, so I wanna keep it fairly mild. So what I'm gonna do is add some salt and yes, this is Himalayan sea salt. You guys have fussed at me about my salt and I'm gonna just grind that over it. And I put quite a bit simply because um, there's no salt in the burger and there's no salt in the tomato I'm going to use. Um, this is garlic. Um, I'm going to use, it's minced garlic. I'm gonna use a good half teaspoon once and then I'll do another. So this will be a full teaspoon of minced garlic. Now remember other things are going in there. Sorry, I was loud with that. In addition to the garlic, I'm gonna use just some really good traditional Mexican spices like chili powder and ground cumin. You can use taco seasoning, but I will tell you, oftentimes taco seasonings have sugars added to them or maltodextrin, which is a form of sugar or food starches. And I really do like to avoid those when I can. So with the cumin, we're gonna put a teaspoon of cumin. And you can put more or less to your like. Um, you can tell I like ground cumin. I like a lot of Mexican dishes. I put it in my chili because I get the huge thing of cumin from Sam's Club. Um, just gives me away, doesn't it? And I'm gonna add some chili. You know, I'm making this in a cast iron skillet. And I'm doing that because I'm gonna bake this in the oven. And this was not open yet, it is now. And I'm going to do two teaspoons of the chili powder. Now, chili powder can have carbs. This one actually says it doesn't. Um, again, probably a fraction of a carb, and that's per serving, and a serving is one quarter teaspoon. So I'm probably adding at least a carb uh, per teaspoon in this, so if you're trying to keep up with it. Um, look it up, but that, this is a serving is a quarter teaspoon, so. It's not awful when you're dividing it, but anyway, as I was saying, I'm putting this in a cast iron skillet and I'm doing that because after I get all this kind of put together and get the vegetables brown or cooked a little, I'm going to add cheese to this and you know I can't cook without cheese, right? I'm going to add cheese to this and I'm going to add some tomato sauce or tomatoes and I'm going to put it in the oven. And so I'm going to serve it in this cast iron skillet straight out of the oven. It stays warm a good nice while. Um, when we went to a Halloween party and I took this dish, I took it in my cast iron skillet and just put a nice lid on it and it stayed warm. Um, I wish you could smell it, it smells so good. I'm gonna add the crushed tomatoes. I may not add all of this. And depending on who I'm making it for, I have used diced tomatoes. Now this is a 28 ounce can. I'd only use about half of it. Uh, tomatoes are so carby. So you only wanna use 14 ounces, 12 ounces, 10, something like that. Instead of crushed tomatoes, you can use um, diced tomatoes. I really like using diced tomatoes, but there are a couple of people who are gonna be at this party who don't like tomatoes, or they don't think they do. So if I add it in as crushed tomatoes, they don't know that there are tomatoes in it. <laughs> well, they do now if they watch the video, right? So I've used about half of that 28 ounce can, so that's about um, 14 ounces. I'm going to mix that in really well and then this is optional. You can add green chilies, chopped green chilies. I don't often because it does add carbs. Um, you can and I'm going to add a few since um, this is mainly for other people to eat. I'm going to add about half this can and this is a large can. It's seven ounces. And keep in mind what I'm doing as this, I've browned some ground beef. Um, not, uh, that's not part of this. I can add the crushed tomatoes and the chilies to it and the other taco seasonings and have taco salad for my family this week. So that's one of the ways I do batch cooking. I cook multiple items at the same time. All right, this is looking and smelling good. So it's time to put the cheese in. Because this is a party and I want it to stay warm and um, I'm going to add cream cheese, and this is probably, this is about, gosh, 
it's not four ounces, I'm trying to do math, it's about three ounces of cream cheese. Okay, so this is three ounces of cream cheese, and I'm just gonna mush it in here, that's our, our word mush or smush, and it will melt. And then I have some shredded cheddar cheese. And there's just, I, I thought about how do you make this dairy free? What you could do if you need a dairy free dish is stop right here. Don't add the cream cheese, don't add the um, cheddar cheese to it, and that would make it a nice um, dairy free dish. I'm going to add some cheddar cheese and you really just want to mix this through and then you're going to put it in the oven to bake. When you put it in the oven, and, and what I'll do, it's this is one of those things I love making dishes ahead of time. So I've got it all nice and warm. I'm mixing the cheese through. Um, I will put it in the oven. Um, guests will be here, let's say they'd be here in an hour. I put it in the oven turn the oven on as everybody arrives, and then it's gonna be really piping hot and wonderful when I put it out on the table. So, needs more cheese, I think. The big thing here is I'm trying to get the cream cheese mixed throughout it. This is just a really wonderful, rich, rich dish. And like I said, this is great to serve as hors d'oeuvres. I will have tortilla chips for the folks who eat carbs. For the folks who don't, I will have, um, they will just eat this with a spoon. My family would just eat it with a spoon. I know you're gonna ask how much cheese I'm putting in. <laughs> I had a big block that we shredded, my husband shredded, and so I'm going to tell you it's two cups of cheese. It may be closer to two and a half. I hate having to measure things because I cook by, by sight, but basically you want to put enough cheese. And there's a, um, a story that high school English teachers, you ask how uh, long a paper should be, and they say it should be like a mini skirt. It should be long, um, short enough to keep it interesting, but long enough to cover everything important. And that's the same thing with the cheddar cheese. You add enough to have great flavor, but not too much to overpower. Okay. That looks about right as I'm eyeballing this. And probably what I would do is shred some more cheese, put it over the top um, before it finishes baking because it's nice to have a kind of a crusty layer of cheese on top. So that is what I'm going to call a Mexican taco bake. I will pause the video so that when I pull it out of the oven, you can see what it looks like uh, before it's served and I'll take some pictures too, and I'll put a link on my blog. My blog is www.lifewithbutter.com, and I do have a few things on the blog, and you can follow me on Facebook at Simply Keto. That's my page, Simply Keto. Um, it's where I put all kinds of articles. I love the science behind this way of eating. So on Simply Keto is where I put a lot of links to the science. And I am on Instagram as Keto Christy, and I am on Twitter as Keto Christie, I think. I don't even know where I am these days. I'm not terribly active on those because I don't understand them. Mostly I'm on YouTube and my blog and my Facebook page. Facebook page I'm on every single stinking day, um, actually probably every hour of the day. I hope that you enjoy this. I can't wait to show you what it looks like finished. So that is our chorizo taco bake. You said pause. Taco bake or Mexican taco bake, and you can see what it looks like coming out of the oven. It's um, <laughs> it's gooey and cheesy and full of goodness. I'm gonna put it down here. It is very heavy in this cast iron skillet. I'm gonna serve it with taco chips for folks who eat carbs, and I'll serve it with just with a spoon for those of us who don't. You could make the low carb flatbread, and that's it. It's got the chorizo and the burger and the cheese and the peppers, and it makes a really great full meal or an order of heavy order. Hope you enjoyed this with your family.